Audio Jungle. Hello everyone, uh, myself Narendra Singh Maurya, hope you all are doing well and uh, guys today we are going to solve gate 2019 performance problem and uh, here uh, this is the problem number 17 right. So now we will read this problem, the power of glide range, the power of glide range for an airplane for an airplane with maximum lift to drag ratio of 18 when the glide starts an altitude of 4 km and this is the fill in the blank and you have to write answer in kilometer okay anyway so this is the glider problem right and uh, here they are asking range if you read the problem you may get the power of glide range for an airplane so range you need to calculate so first of all we'll write the given data okay we'll write the given data what they have given lip to drag that ratio and it is the maximum value how much it is given it is 18 then next they have given altitude you can take it edge which is nothing but 4 kilometer and what you need to calculate range that is the fill in the blank you have to write kilometer we need to calculate this all right now so uh, actually that glider is what at 4 kilometer altitude and it, it it start gliding from the 4 kilometer so i will draw this diagram so you may easily understand this okay now check you can say this gliding angle is gamma this is a this is b and this is nothing but range r and this is nothing but altitude all right this is the altitude you just say this altitude is nothing but h okay if you draw the free body diagram for this glider so you may get this is the glider obviously it is gliding here so that gliding angle will be gamma you have taken here we just uh, draw the free body diagram that force and all so see this is the preference line is here so perpendicular to the velocity this will be the velocity component here yes or no so perpendicular to velocity that will be the lift component perpendicular to this we have weight and if you take the component of weight so this is gamma hence this is will also be gamma so this will be w cos gamma and here this will be w sin gamma and opposite to the forward motion will have a drag so if you you say this is what figure 1 and this is what figure 2 hope you understood this right so from figure 2 if you check that components it is nothing but w sin gamma is equal to d because thrust component will not be here because power off condition so you can say this is thrust and zero and thrust obviously thrust will be in working uh, uh, in forward direction and this thrust is what zero because it is a glider it is clearly mentioned power off no? so thrust will be zero so you, if you want to write w sin gamma plus thrust you have to write but this thrust is what zero huh? So W sin gamma is equal to drag and uh, W cos gamma is equal to lift. Okay. This two you may get. 
so from here you can write tan gamma is equal to what sin gamma by cos gamma so it is d by l this is equation number one hope you understood up to here right now we'll go for the figure one right from figure one what is the figure one tan gamma check perpendicular by base h by r this is figure two hope you understood so from figure one and two you can write tan gamma is equal to h by r is equal to c it is d by l yes d by l sorry this is d by l d by l okay now see uh, in this problem nitrate d by l so basically here they are asking check what they are asking in this they are asking range so that's the reason both figure one and figure two is required so that one place you can show the uh, you can show the altitudes heights and another uh, range you can show so because altitude is given how much it is four kilometers so that data is given so based on that data you have to draw the diagram so as they have given an r they are asking here r range you have to calculate okay but for that triangle you should at least know what is the gamma because gamma r and h three uh, unknowns uh, three constant you can say or variables you can say it is available here so one two value at, at least you should know maybe h and r you should you know and gamma you can calculate or gamma and h you know then r you can calculate all right so gamma for gamma you have uh, this uh, equation number one tan gamma is equal to d by l and l by d ratio is given maximum value hmm? anyway so for that reason i have taken this now what will be the range here check what will be the range range will be h into l by d yes here they are asking the range okay with maximum lift to drag so anyway if you want to calculate the range value so it is h into l by d this maximum value is given so obviously you will get r max now you can calculate this how much it is altitude is given how much it is 4 kilometer i think right it is 4 kilometer and l by d is 18 4 into 18 so this is the answer for this yes or no it's a very simple problem only so this value directly this constant you can uh, fill here okay this constant you can fill here how much 72 because 4 is given kilometer so 4 into 18 72 and that unit will be kilometer always see uh, you, you whenever it is a fill in the blank problem so that time unit is very important that time you need to check unit if suppose it is given unit is given meter so kilo uh, so that time value will be uh, like 7 72000 that value you need to write okay because 72 kilometer means 72000 meter yes or no so you need unit to check there always now we'll go for next problem hope you all understand this it is very simple okay it is very very simple problems now check 
this is the next problem problem number 19 all right so for the 19 number problem read it the airplane is a steady level flight with a true air speed of 50 meter per second so true air speed it is given 50 meter per second the ambient air density of and ambient pressure so ambient means that surrounding density so surrounding density is what rho infinity is given how much uh, point 0.91 kg per meter cube pressure ambient pressure uh, sorry p infinity is given how much 7 into 10 to power 4 newton per meter square and uh, density at sea level it is given how much the respectively at sea level air density is 1.225 kg per meter cube so sea level density you just denote by rho naught or sea level density is given 1.225 okay kg per meter cube all right and ambient pressure okay at sea level ambient pressure is given how much uh, it is p naught denoted by p naught or p sl you can write sea level 1.01 .01 10 to power 5 newton per meter square the equivalent or see it is mentioned clearly the equivalent or indicated air speed so in equivalent or indicated air speed you need to calculate this value we need to calculate one thing is very clear like all type of the speeds uh, it is already discussed in previous uh, gate 2022 solutions i think but here again i will discuss see initially you may have indicated air speed okay then you have to correct position error instrument error instrument error if you correct it then you will get calibrated air speed again again you have to correct compressibility error c level okay then you will get equivalent air speed finally you will get true air speed you will correct altitude i hope you understood now okay so if they are saying equivalent air speed or indicated air speed it means in between that error they already have mentioned or they have eliminated that part and directly they are saying like okay indicated air speed and equivalent air speed now almost same because that error they have neglected all right so so don't get confused indicated air speed and equivalent air speed how it is same hmm? I mean that instrument position error or compressibility error C level that they have already eliminated or they have said this is the negligible part so they have removed that so directly here you can say an indicated air speed is nothing but what is the speed indicating uh, on the uh, dial okay dial gauge whatever the speed is what indicating that directly that speed will be called as a indicated indicated air speed I hope now he, it is clear i mean it should not be any kind of uh, confusion between equivalent and indicated air speed all right now so uh, we have to uh, go for calculation and that calculation uh, basically in between equivalent air speed and 
true air speed that is our calculation so this point will be our calculation point okay this is the upon our calculation here we have to calculate we'll find what is the common thing for the true air speed and equivalent air speed and that calculation if you do then automatically you can calculate the equivalent air speed okay because all the data they have given now what you will do suppose uh, this is what sea level and this is what altitude and this is what altitude at this altitude any uh, density is given that is called infinite ambient density and uh, whatever the if you are taking density at that altitude so that altitude speed will be true air speed okay and if you are taking density at sea level then sea level density will be equivalent air speed yes or no if you correct that altitude then you may get true air speed so the point what i want to tell you that point is if you are taking density at sea level so at sea level density speed will be equivalent air speed and if you are taking density at any altitude so at that altitude speed will be true air speed that's the point for both cases dynamic pressure dynamic pressure must be same so dynamic pressure is nothing but p half rho v square so dynamic pressure at the altitude so what will be the dynamic pressure 1 by 2 rho at altitude is rho infinity okay into speed and this speed will be true air speed because you are writing density at that altitude is equal to dynamic pressure will be same so density at sea level so speed will be equivalent air speed what will be the equivalent air speed you tell me equivalent air speed will be check 1 by 2 1 by 2 cancel out the so equivalent air speed will be true air speed in root it is ambient density divided by sea level density i hope you understood this if you read in this problem true air speed they have given how much 50 meter per second pressure they have given but there is no use of the pressure okay so true air speed is 50 into check the density at ambient at that altitude what is the density ambient density 0 0.91 so 0 0.91 and what is the sea level density check it is 1.225 1.225 you just perform this calculation and here in my calculation how much it is wait 0.91 divided by 1.225 all right if you take root of it so it will be 0 0.86 multiplied by 50 true air speed so it will be 43 0 0.09 meter per second so this will be equivalent air speed and which is also equivalent to in indicated air speed so your answer is what 43.09 meter per second you need to write here 43.09 this is your answer. hope you all understand this solution done all right now we'll go for next problem okay uh, next problem will be check this is the problem number 41 all right consider an 
एयरप्लेन विथ वेट ऑफ एट थाउजेंड न्यूटन ऑल राइट विंग एरिया ऑफ सिक्सटीन मीटर स्क्वायर विंग जीरो लिफ्ट ड्रैग कोफिशियंट ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू ओस्ट वॉल्ड इफिशियंसी फैक्टर पॉइंट एट वेरी गुड एंड विंग एस्पेक्ट रेशियो ऑफ सिक्स इन स्टडी लेवल फ्लाइट विथ विंग विथ विंग लिफ्ट कोफिशियंट ऑफ पॉइंट थ्री सेवन फाइव considering the same flight speed and ambient density all right the ratio of induced drag coefficient during the steady level flight to that during 30 degree climb is oh okay 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 they are asking the ratio anyway so given data we have to write first that weight it is given how much 8000 newton Wing plane form area is given how much? Sixteen meter square. G wing zero lift drag means C D naught. How much? Point zero two they have given. Oost wall efficiency means E. Point eight. Okay. Wing aspect ratio means A R, which is nothing but six. Okay. In a steady level flight with wing lift lift coefficient means. CL is the lift coefficient. It is given 0.375. Considering the same flight, and density is same hmm? for both case. And what are the cases? case 1 case 2 what are the cases one is case one is the steady level see it is mentioned during steady level flight so in steady level flight this is weight cg okay Lift because this is the forward motion, so perpendicular to that velocity, velocity will have a lift. This will be opposite, will be drag, and this forward will be thrust. So automatically you got lift is equal to weight. Second is the climbing. Okay, so. climbing flight will be like uh, this will be climbing flight yes and this climbing you can say if this is the climbing flight here so this will be what you say gamma okay climbing angle is gamma if climbing angle is gamma here so perpendicular weight will be w perpendicular to this velocity this is the velocity climbing velocity so perpendicular to this velocity will have a lift force so obviously you have to resolve this two component if this is gamma so this angle will be gamma no doubt about it what will be this component w cos gamma and this will be w sin gamma yes or no simple it that propelling force in forward direction will be thrust and opposite will be drag so here will be drag also this is figure 1 i hope this one is clear figure 2 okay nothing is there it's a simple concept only so from figure 1 lift is equal to weight steady level from 
फिगर टू एल इज इक्वल टू एल इज इक्वल टू चेक डब्ल्यू कॉस का माई होप दिस इज क्लियर एल इज इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू कॉस का ओके एंड दिस इज नथिंग बट क्लाइंबिंग फ्लाइट ऑल राइट नाउ वट दे आर आस्किंग इफ यू चेक इट इज वेरी क्लियरली मैंशन फॉर द स्टडी लेवल एंड क्लाइंबिंग फ्लाइट that ratio of induced drag so we'll write in uh, ratio of induced drag so we'll write first induced drag what is the induced drag induced drag coefficient or induced drag ko ha yes induced drag coefficient so cdi is nothing but cl square upon pi e ar that is the one thing second thing you know drag polar from here also you can calculate answer okay no problem cl square upon pi e ar with the help of this also you can calculate what is the drag polar drag polar is cd cd not plus parasite drag plus induced drag coefficient cdi this also you can write cdi cd not plus cdi also you can write kcl square that i told many times induced drag coefficient you can write kcl square no so it comes this is the relation here because 1 upon pi e ar into cl square what is this 1 upon pi e ar it is k so i think it is now clear सर ना बहुत हर सेम ना चेक सो बेसिकली इफ यू वांट टू राइट द इंड्यूस ड्रैक ऑफिशियन फॉर बोथ केसेस स्टडी लेवल एंड एंड क्लाइंबिंग केस सो व्हाट विल बी द सीडीआई फॉर स्टडी लेवल आई विल राइट एसएल एस एल एफ मीन्स स्टडी लेवल फ्लाइट एस एल एफ मीन्स होप यू अंडरस्टूड दिस इज नथिंग बट के सी एल स्क्वायर ऑल राइट for for steady level l is equal to w hmm? if l is equal to w is there then what will be the cl square so simple it is nothing but 2w rho s v square yes or no Just simple only. You can write this. L is equal to what you can write. L is equal to you can write one by two half rho v square s into C L. Now if you calculate C L, it will be what two W by rho s v square or rho v square s. This is the value. This is for steady level. Now coming to this. L is equal to what you can write half rho v square s into C L and that is nothing but W cos gamma. If I say what is the C L here, so you have to say two W cos gamma divided by rho v square s. All right. now if i say what is the cdi for climbing flight hmm? cf cf means c 
climbing flight. So CDI CF. CF means climbing flight. Why I am using shortcut? Uh, I mean the short notation because in your examination you have to mark somewhere like you need to remember. This is the solution. So I am taking so much time and I am explaining each and everything. But in examination you have to go very fast and you just mark like uh, maybe you can write CDI and CDI dash. CDI dash is for climbing. No need to write always CF and all. It is not required here. Okay. But here I am writing because I have enough time. Na? So, CF. So, it will be K CL square again. So, what you may get? K into CL. What is the CL square? 2 W cos gamma divided by rho v square s this is 2 this is 1 i hope it is very clear huh? separately i have written so that easily you can understand okay from equation 1 and 2 hmm? what is the equation 1 cdi steady level flight it is nothing but k real square which is nothing but k 2 w rho s v square second cdi climbing flight cf k cl square k into 2 w cos gamma cos cy what ratio they are asking check what ratio they are asking steady level flight to climbing uh, climbing that uh, during climbing that angle is given so i should write climbing angle gamma it is given okay 30 degree climb this is the climbing angle all right climbing angle gamma here it is this is given 30 degree anyways so steady level to climbing so we can write cdi a steady level flight to cdi climbing flight check kk cancel out hmm? what you may get kk cancel out 2w this value will be there so rho s b square so if i am not wrong you can write this k 2w rho s b square here also you can write k 2w rho s b square okay into cos gamma square i i think it is clear now hmm? see this two value will be cancel out check what you may get one upon cos gamma square what is the cos gamma it is 30 hmm? check it is given climbing 30 degree clearly it is mentioned just now i have mentioned 30 degree so you just take this so what is this value cdi at steady level flight divided by cdi at climbing flight 1 upon cos 30 how much it is it is i think root 3 by 2 so what you may get 4 by 3 ah, 4 by 3 so it is how much it is 4 by 3 wait 4 by 3 1.3333 1.33 how much how many decimal they had asked 2 decimal so this is your answer only check I hope this solution is clear to everyone because it's very simple only the thing is calculation you have to do perfectly 
equation you have to make proper uh, perfectly and in examination you have to go very fast so be careful once you are writing equation once you are resolving the forces components forces and all so that time you have to be careful all right sure now we'll go for the next problem <coughs> all right now this is the next problem okay in this problem see this is problem number 43 we'll read this problem first a propeller driven airplane first of all that name whatever it is given it is very important has a gross takeoff weight means initial weight 4905 newton with a wing area okay that wing area is given assume that wing are operating at maximum cl to power 3 by 2 by cd okay minimum power condition maximum cl to power 3 by 2 by cd all right of 13 that value is given the propeller efficiency is 0.9 oh my god propeller efficiency is 0.9 and specific fuel consumptions of the engine is 0.76 this is basically power specific fuel consumption 0.76 kg per kilowatt hour anyway given that density of air at sea level is 1.225 and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meter per second the weight of the fuel required for the endurance 18 hours at sea level all right so but they are asking weight of fuel they are asking anyway first we will write given data so it will be clear you need to write takeoff weight means initial weight so i must say initial weight if i say uh, initial weight is nothing but w1 better no? so this is the initial weight i will write this that, that word also initial weight obviously initial weight will be gross weight also gross weight means including a weight of fuel no? so this is 4905 always remember gross weight means total weight of the aircraft means including fuel weight okay that is given 4905 wing area is given how much 6.84 meter square okay that value cl to power 3 by 2 cd it is given 13 propeller efficiency is given eta p how much 0.9 the specific fuel consumption it is cp okay cp just like ct means thrust specific fuel consumption cp is the power i will write otherwise cp means heat coefficient no? at constant pressure so power is specific consumption how much it is given it is given point seven six kg per kilo hour. All right. Better we'll convert this CP in standard unit. Point seven six no point seven six kg. So that should be Newton. You need to convert in Newton. Or else if you are writing yeah it should be Newton standard unit is un uh, Newton no? thrust uh, power okay so you will write uh, in terms of Newton watt second that that will be the unit basically so if you write so we just convert into Newton so 0.76 into 9.8 divide by kilowatt so convert into watt 10 power 3 hours so convert into second so third 3600 3, this value you may have let me calculate this 0 0.76 into 9.8 divide by 3600 divide by 1000 it is 2.068 10 to the power minus 6 Newton 
watt second all right that is the standard value okay then we need to write density at uh, c level how much 1.225 and acceleration due to gravity obviously g is equal to 9.8 meter per second is square 981 and endurance e is given 18 hours convert into second standard because here also you have taken second so this will be second 18 into 3600 how much it is 18 into 3600 64800 it is nothing but 648 all right all the given data here it is now noted so <clears throat> this problem is quite simple okay nothing to worry very simple concept now for propeller driven airplane you should know endurance many times i explained i i, I repeated the things always like uh, for for uh, piston uh, propeller engine or propeller driven engine or propeller driven airplane and jet driven jet airplane for both range formula will be different and endurance formula will be different i mean for propeller driven endurance formula will be uh, different and for jet engine air uh, endurance formula will be different similarly range for propeller driven airplane will be different formula i'm saying and for jet engine uh, uh, range formula will be different that i already have told many times okay so you should remember four formulas two two formula for range and two formula for endurance for both engines okay so i will write the formula directly here uh, for the endurance for propeller driven okay you make a note of it and you remember it so i will write for propeller driven airplane endurance endurance means time taken uh, to the to the time taken to the uh, to the flight in single uh, filling of the fuel i mean there will not be any refueling okay so once you have filled the tank and you have you have uh, taken a flight so for that amount of the fuel what maximum a time that aircraft can fly in the sky called endurance that you should know okay so that endurance for the uh, propeller driven airplane it will be eta p because that efficiency it is given so if it efficiency is not given see here it is given clearly that efficiency if propeller efficiency is not given then you can take one okay so no need to write eta p you can write one but here it is given so eta p divide by cp cp is the power specific fuel consumption because it is a propeller so obviously we will talk about the power so cp okay into 2 rho s this is the formula direct formula actually it is derived formula you can derive also but not required here you need to remember okay in bracket W2 minus W1. Okay. This is the formula. I told you W1 is the initial mass, okay, or initial weight, sorry, or gross weight of the aircraft, and W2 is the initial weight, initial weight of airplane and w2 is the final means suppose this is the aircraft it is going for the climbing then cruise then again that aircraft will go for the landing here 
okay so so from this takeoff to this landing okay up to what time it was in air so that time at initial when it is started take off then weight will be w1 and when it is landed then weight is what w2 so what is the amount of fuel can you tell me so w2 will be the final okay so final weight will be what whatever the initial weight minus whatever the amount of the fuel is what burn yes or no because here here you have burned the fuel up to here you have burned the fuel you have burned because that aircraft was flying so here whatever the amount of fuel is what burn it is wf so simple you can say this is take off this is landing i hope you understood now so your job is to calculate w2 anyhow if you calculate all the value is given there nothing to worry all the value they have given only you should know the you should remember the equation formula you should remember and directly keep the value automatically you may get okay so i will write here all the data i will write will calculate then endurance just now we had calculated what is the value 6000 no 64800 no second we will write that 64800 second eta p all the value need to write eta p is 0.9 and what is the ct 2.068 10 to power minus 6 we will write this is nothing but 0.9 2.068 and power minus 6 then 2 rho s what is the s i think 6.84 yes and density is 1.225 all right we'll write this value no? that formula check what is the formula root 2 rho s so here we can write 2 1 2 2 5 s is what is the value here s it is nothing but 6 point wait let me check forget 6.84 sorry 6 point this is the value into sealed power 3 by 2 by cd how much it is that value it is given 13 it is given 13 in bracket 1 upon root w2 minus 1 upon root initial or gross weight of the airplane how much 4905 simple so we'll calculate this value check what amount we are getting now we'll put in calculator 64800 into 2.06 10 to the power minus 6 okay divide by it is divided by 0 0.9 0 0.9 divided by root 2 2 into 1.225 into 6.84 6.84 in root okay divide by 13 okay plus plus uh, plus plus in bracket i will write 1 by root root how much 4905 4905 this will be the value all right and uh, we'll square this 
will square I will square this how much and then one divided by so three four double three okay thank god three four double three point seven zero three two this is w2 what is the amount of fuel amount of fuel burn check what is the w1 4905 1471 1471.2967 newton this is the answer check this is the fill in the blank so 1471 Point two nine newton. If it is unit is suppose given kilo newton, so that time you need to write one point four seven one kilo newton. If unit is given kilo newton, but here it is given newton, so this value you need to put. Please remember this. Whatever I am saying, you need to focus. Okay. So this is the solution. I hope <coughs> you all understand this. Okay. It's a very simple problem. all the problems today whatever we have solved it was very very simple problem okay so these are the problems it was asked in gate 2019 almost all the problems we have solved now next class will have uh, gate 2018 uh, performance uh, problems and solutions all right take care and guys you please like the uh, videos no? on my youtube channel you like it and uh, You subscribe the channel also at the same time because uh, whenever I will upload a lectures, maybe subject lecture or maybe solution of any subjects or any updates. If if I will upload, so if you have subscribed the channel, so automatically immediately you may get the notifications. So for that reason, I am saying you just like and subscribe. Okay, subscribe the channels. Okay, guys, thank you all. Take care. Thank you.